and welcome to this RSGS Chalk Talk series. Today we will be covering the National 5 Geography Assignment task. Before we begin, let's take a look at how the assignment fits into the overall course assessment structure. There are two externally assessed components that you will complete. The marks from these components are combined to create your overall final award. The first component is the question paper, and this will be worth a total of 80 marks, or 80% of the overall course award. The second component, and the focus for this chalk talk, is the assignment. And the assignment is worth 20 marks and is worth 20% of your overall course award. So how is the assignment completed? Your teacher will tell you when you begin planning for your assignment. And this will be done at a time when they have judged that you're ready to undertake the assignment stage. The assignment overall is broken up into two distinct sections. Part one is the research stage. Well, part two of the assessment stage is when you will produce a written account of your findings under exam conditions. If you are working as part of a team, it's important that you're able to demonstrate your part in how the research information was collected and that the processed information you produce is your own work. This could come about from how you describe your role in collecting the information as well as the production of your processed information, which we'll talk about later. You should choose a topic that is geographic and one that allows you to collect data through your own primary research or allows you to go and collect information through secondary sources. Ideally, you should choose a topic that will lend themselves to be able to do both. And you should ask your teacher to check that your topic is suitable. One piece of advice that I give my own classes is to choose a topic that can be framed as a question. For example, is there a difference between this could come from a study of different parts of a city. Uh, is there a difference between one area and the other? Or are there differences between one stage in a river and another? By framing your assignment as a question, it's my experience that my own classes find it much easier to then be able to describe and explain their findings. But your assignment doesn't need to be a question. It can just simply be a straight title. This may be that you've chosen to select a particular area to study. For example, this could be a farm, it could be a different part of a city, it could be a part of a landscape. The choice is really up to you. The key thing to keep in mind is that this is your opportunity to shine and your chance to show your knowledge and understanding of geography. An important consideration is health and safety. You may be traveling to uh, an unfamiliar location in a city or somewhere in a rural area near water or any other type of hazard. And before you go, it's important that you make sure you learn how to use and to both carry equipment safely. Uh, you may be using your own transport or public transport, and some of the equipment you use may be quite bulky and or expensive. Make sure you know what clothing and footwear to have and check the weather forecasts in advance. When carrying out field work, you should always be assessing any risk. Working by a busy road or public space, fast flowing water, changing tides, Make sure that you have a plan B so that if things do change and the situation becomes more dangerous, that you can exit and leave the situation safely. If you're working with a teacher or any other member of field centre staff, be sure to follow their instructions at all times. So what sort of information can you collect data on? Well, there are no limits on what sort of data or even how much data you can collect. The screen shows a sample of the possible methods that you could use. The information will come from either primary or secondary sources of data. Primary data will be data that you have collected yourself. It's important that you read around your subject so that any primary research that you do undertake will have context and will allow you to explore the issues further. Once you've gathered your data from your own research, it's now time to pull it all together. You have a maximum of two sides of A4 or one single side of A3. You must remember that there are no marks for the completion of processed information, but the marks are awarded from your own analysis of this through your descriptions or explanations. Advice that I give to my classes is that if you do choose to process your information on A4, is to use two single sides as opposed to one back-to-back -back sheet. When it comes to the assessment stage, this will avoid flipping the sheet over, making the processed information harder to interpret than needs be. You should consider the use of headings and how much space your processed information should take up on your two sides of A4 or one side of A3. 
Making the information too small may make it too difficult to read. The processed information can be produced using either a software package like a spreadsheet. If you do choose to use a spreadsheet, then you maybe want to consider printing in colour. At times, the default colour settings, if printed in black and white, can actually make the graphs harder to read than they need to be. So if you can print in colour, do. You can, of course, produce this by hand, and there is no need at all to use any software packages. One final point to consider is that while, as I mentioned earlier, there are no marks awarded for the creation of processed information, if you do not submit any processed information, there will be an overall four mark deduction from your total of 20. If this is the case, then your assessment will be marked out of 16 and not 20 marks. Of course, your processed information doesn't need to all be graphs. You can, of course, take photographs or use field sketches, and you may choose to annotate your images to show more information or to highlight a key geographical feature. The one thing, of course, to consider is that your processed information is there to be interpreted. Any information that you do include, of course, you should avoid copying large chunks from. If you find a particular website that you find useful, you could take a screenshot from it. You maybe find uh, an online news story from which you can highlight or again annotate the source. For example, in this graph, I've added additional information on to enhance the original graph, which showed a population increase. The processed information is the main item on which your assignment depends on. You should really consider how you want to organise your information to ensure that you have a clear and logical order that supports you in the assessment write-up stage. Consider how you're going to use your A4 sides and consider the size and legibility of what you choose to include. Once you've completed your processed information, your teacher will have told you well in advance as to when the assessment is due to take place. You have a total of one hour to complete your final write-up. Make sure that you have your processed information with you for the assignment write-up, but that again, that you do not copy large chunks of information from. Finally, the structure of the assessment is split into two sections. Section A is your account of the research methods that you've used, while section B is your description, explanation and conclusions that you've made based on your researched question or topic. In the first section, you're asked to recall at least two research methods that you have used to collect your data on. You can add more in if you wish, but this may cost you time, and I advise my classes to just to stick to two. When completing the write-up, you should think clearly about the steps that you undertook to collect your information on. During the research phase, it's a good idea to keep a note of exactly what it was you did and when you did it, so that you can refer to this later on, as your write-up may be several weeks or months in the future. So in summary for section A, first of all, you're being asked to consider the what. What is it that you're researching? What methods have you used to collect your information on? And then consider the how. How was your data collected? What steps did you take to collect your information on? What sources of information did you use? and give as clear an account of this as you possibly can. Now that section A is completed, it's time to move on to section B. Section B is time to present your findings and show what it is that you've found out and be able to make your own descriptions, explanations and conclusions. This section is worth an overall of 14 marks. The marks are broken down as following. Three marks of your 14 are available for description, whilst 11 marks remaining are for explaining and concluding. However, you can of course score all 14 marks through your own explanatory and concluding points. This allows you to simply think about the best way to tell your findings in a way that makes sense to you. When working your way through this section, writing in a clear and structured way helps you to keep track of your progress towards covering the findings of your research. One method that I choose to use with my class is to use a PEE structure. Of course, you are free to choose your own. When using a PEE structure, always start with a clear opening statement. Make a valid description, and this should be linked to your research question or title. Use your processed information where you can to back this up with evidence. Explain, using your own background knowledge through your background reading or secondary sources, to link together your point or another piece of evidence that are in your processed information. 
Finally, you should of course make a conclusion. We tend to think of conclusions as things that come at the end. And while this is the true, it does not mean that we need to wait until the end to make a conclusion. You can of course make a series of conclusions as you go. Again, one piece of advice I give my own class is that they should try to conclude as they go. What you should do, of course, though, is when you do reach the end, is have one final conclusion that pulls the whole body of your work into one final point. So finally, to step back and look at the whole assignment process, stage one is to choose your own topic. Make sure you check with your teacher that this is an appropriate geographic topic for you to study. Step two is to plan and then collect information from either primary sources secondary sources, or a combination of both. Step three is to take your information, process it in a way that makes sense, making sure that you use headings and think about how you want to organize your space efficiently so that when you come to the assessment stage and you write up your findings, it's in a clear and logical order. We hope you find this helpful and be sure to check out the other Chalk Talks in our series.